Hello, in this video we're going to look at the normal distribution within the exponential family. And this is a follow-up video from the exponential family mean and variance. So I'd recommend that you go back and watch this video. In this video we put a district, if the distribution could be written in one of these forms, then it was part of the exponential family. And this, uh, this is sort of using the uh, original parameters and then this is uh, reparameterized into what's called conical form and we're going to do this for the normal distribution here um, f of x and mu and sigma squared are the parameters for the normal distribution and is commonly written in this form x and mu are real numbers sigma squared is positive now we just st slowly start changing it. And so this sigma squared, you know, square root of sigma squared is sigma. If you take it to the top, it's sigma to the minus 1. And then if you exponentiate it and log it, you still get sigma to the minus 1, but the minus 1 can be brought out front. And we expand the quadratic, or the, yeah. Now we take this, since it's the product of exponentials, we can just add the exponents. And so this piece comes in here, and this is expanded to 3. Then this piece here can be written in the product of two vectors, these two pieces. And then these come down. So, so what we've done, these are, this is the h function, this is your eta vector, these right here, and this is your sufficient statistics, and then this is your log partition of the exponential family. And then what we get from this, well actually not quite yet, now this is, this is the exponential in sort of the original parameter, now let's put it in canonical form which then if you think about it like this where this is just a, the eta vector is just eta 1 and eta 2 and then your sufficient statistics and then your log partition that makes this integrate to 1 then this is this is called canonical form where each of those represent you know the specific part of that formula but the beauty of this canonical form is then we get mean and variances or moments in general easily from this log partition so let's look at that so here the expected value of the first sufficient statistic which is expected value of x and we know what that is for the mean but the theory in the exponential family says if we take the first partial with respect to a to one of our log partition we get the mean of our first sufficient statistic. And so here is our here's our log partition. We're going to take the partial with respect to x1. This piece goes away and we're only left with this which ends up being this. So now let's put in what a to 1 and a to 2 are and things cancel and we get mu as we should, right? Well then the second one, the uh, second the mean of the second sufficient statistic is expected value of x squared <clears throat> which says it's the partial with respect to a to 2 of our log partition and then here we have two little two terms with a to 2 and we get this and then we plug in what a to 1 and a to 2 equal and then it equals this and notice that if we take the expected value of x squared minus the mean squared we're going to get the variance as we should but we also get that from the exponential family so the variance of the first sufficient statistic which in our this case it's x that's the second partial of the log partition so really you can think of it as the partial of a to one with respect to you know, we already took a, uh, a partial once, so we can put that here, and then we take the derivative again, and we get this. Plug in what we know about a to 2, 
and things cancel and we get sigma squared. And that's what we should get from the variance of x. Now let's look at the variance of the second sufficient statistic, which in this case it is sigma squared. It's the second partial with respect to eta 2 of our log partition. So we took the derivative once and got this, so let's take the, par the partial again and we get this. We plug in what we know about eta 1 and eta 2, and things cancel and we get this. So that's the variance of x squared. Now, I got a question for you. Let's take the covariance. Let's find the covariance of our two sufficient statistics, which is the covariance of x and the covariance of x squared. Now, that should is this going to be 0? question before I show the next line. And what the theory of exponential family says, if we take the partial with respect to eta 1 and then the partial with respect to eta 2 of a log partition, that is our covariance between these two sufficient statistics. So we took the partial of this with respect to eta 1 and we got this from, you know, when we calculated the mean. So let's take the partial with respect to eta 2, and we get this. And we plug in what we know about eta 1 and eta 2, and it reduces to this. And this is not 0. And, and it, it could be if the mean is 0, then the covariance is 0, but in general it's not. And that's because this one here has not been centered by the mean, so the, or the sample mean. So... Anyway, well, that's all I have for today. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, subscribe and like it so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.